Well, hello, y'all. I am back. And I have, um, well, I have about the same word that I had for y'all last time, except we're going to go more in depth with it. Because I see that we need to. I've been making observations, you know, like on social media. And I, I mean, I just, we're going to pray first because you all know the drill. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I praise you, God, and I thank you for this day. And I ask that you would just anoint my words in the ears of those who hear these words. Lord, I surrender this over to you today. God, I ask that you would keep me humble. And I ask that you would help me to hear you clearly. I ask that you would help my listeners to be able to distinguish your voice from the enemy's voice, from their own and from other people's. And God, I ask that you would give them discernment in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And give me discernment too, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so we're going to be talking today again about that religious spirit and, and about, you know, well, okay. So recently I've been like observing a pattern because you know that's what prophets and prophetic people do we see patterns and stuff and i don't know god just points them out you know and it's like oh hey look there's a pattern okay so the pattern that i've been seeing recently is god moves right in a big way uh like with some people that you're not expecting him to move with and then what the truther movement does is gets all divided up because we have people that want to come into agreement with that religious spirit and be like, Oh, oh my gosh, you guys, I saw so-and-so flashing an Illuminati hand sign. Let me stop you right there because you know what? I do that sometimes. Do you know why I do? Because I'm expressive and I talk with my hands. And so, I didn't realize that that was an Illuminati hand sign, you know, two or three years ago. I, And then I found out it was, and I'm like, oh, okay, well. But I still talk with my hands. And sometimes you'll catch me pointing in the air. And sometimes you'll catch me do this. That doesn't mean that I'm in the Illuminati for crying in a bucket. What it means is I talk with my hands. So you can take that and... Well, you can finish the sentence. Um, and here's the other thing, okay? I follow people who I know are hearing from the Lord. Because if they're not hearing from the Lord, and that matters, okay, y'all? That is a... 17 drop, actually. Be careful who you follow. Because there's a reason. Because, okay, whatever people that you're following, if they are in agreement with a religious spirit, if they are in agreement with a Jezebel spirit, that's going to affect you. And so if you're following people that are just fear porn, fear porn, fear porn, doom and gloom, we're all gonna die. Oh my gosh. You know, black pill, black pill, black pill. If that's what you're doing, then you are going to be, you know, this like black hole to everybody that you're around because you're in agreement with fear. If you are following people that are just picking everybody apart at the seams because I saw them flash in the open of the hills. You're going to be deceived. And, oh, yeah, that actually reminds me. Thank you, Lord. I'd forgotten that you'd wanted me to put that verse in here. So let's go to that real quick. Shall we? So we're actually going to start. I was going to do Psalm 105, 15, but I think that we need to start in verse 13. 13, and so here we go. It says, when they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he allowed no man to do them wrong. In fact, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. 
All right, I'm gonna stop there. So let's break that down, shall we? Okay, we can clearly see from scripture that God isn't too keen on people like putting their mouth on his prophets or putting their mouth on his anointed. And so I wanna warn you guys that there are people out there that you're putting your mouth on right now who are prophets. And they just may not have discovered that yet because maybe they haven't discovered who they are in Christ yet. But that's supposed to be our job is to help them find who they are in Christ. Instead, we want to hit them over the head with the Bible and make them feel like, well, you, you, you're you just, you'll, you'll never be good enough. You know, I'm going to say this again because apparently some people didn't hear it. But, you know, I can't even imagine if I were a famous person right now, if I had grown up in one of those families and I was like, you know, starting to get my eyes open right now and I was seeking the truth and I, I was like, oh my gosh, sifting through all this information. <sighs> and I found Christians, Christians that just, all that they can do is put their mouth on one person after another. It happened with Sound of Freedom. Now it's happening with Jason Aldean. It's just like, there are some people that they're just not happy unless they are picking everything apart. And you know, that is not godly. You are in agreement with a religious demon. If that is the case, if all you can do is look at people and find fault and pick them apart, There's a guy I follow on Twitter, and his name is Dom Luker. He is excellent. Excellent. Like, that man knows his stuff. And he doesn't expose anybody without hard evidence. So you're not going to find Dom Luker making dumb little accusations against people unless he's got, if he's got pictures or if he's got like actual, you know, proof of something, then he exposes stuff. And I trust that that man knows what he's talking about. Number one, he's a former hip hop executive. Number two, that man knows the Lord. I can tell. I can tell. And I mean, We need, rather than just flapping our gums in the breeze, what we need to do is when we see something come out about one of these people, we need to pray about it first. Rather than just going with our knee-jerk reaction, like, oh, I knew it. Oh, I knew it. It's It was too good to be true. You know, God speaks a lot of things sometimes that sound too good to be true. Luke 137. Um... For nothing shall be impossible with God. Literally, nothing is impossible with God. The only time it becomes that way is when we limit him with our lack of faith. And so another thing I want to throw in here today is that like, I, I said this before and I'm going to say it again that we are going to start reaping what we sow, the, our words. And so if you are going around speaking stuff negatively over others, expect to reap negative stuff in your life because that's exactly what's going to happen. If you are going around expecting the worst, well, you're going to get what you have faith in. And that's a word for somebody. All right. So now we're going to move on to this other scripture because this, this is, we've got to. All right. So we're going to go to John chapter eight, you guys. I want to jog y'all's memory here. All right. It says, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives early in the morning at dawn. He came back into the temple and the people came to him in crowds. He sat down and was teaching them. When the scribes and Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, they made her stand in the middle of the court 
and then put the case before him. They teach her, they said, this woman has been caught in the very act of adultery. I'm gonna stop myself a second. Can you just imagine the scene? The Pharisees and the religious leaders of the time that were like steeped in the law and all of the regulations and rules that y'all need to jump through in order to be holy and righteous before the Lord. And so they find this poor woman caught in the act of adultery. They don't care what her past looked like. They don't care that, hey, maybe she was a sex slave. Maybe she had no idea how to be a woman. Maybe she, who knows? No, they didn't care about that. All they cared about was, you know what? We're gonna stick it to Jesus because we don't care about this woman's soul at all. All we care about is being right. And so they throw her at his feet. She was probably naked. The Bible doesn't say. Anyway, continuing. Now Moses and the law commanded us, this is the Pharisees, that such women shall be stoned to death. But what do you say to do with her? What is your sentence, Jesus? This they said to try to test him, hoping they might find a charge on which to accuse him. See? Do you see? Do you see how that religious spirit works? Mm-hmm. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger, like, mm, I'm just going to avoid y'all. Like, I love you, Jesus. Okay. However, when they persisted with their question, he raised himself up and said, let him who is without sin among you be the first to cast a stone at her. And then he bent down and went on writing on the ground with his finger. They listened to him. And then they began going out, conscience stricken, one by one, from the oldest down to the last one of them, till Jesus was left alone with the woman standing there before him in the center of the court. When Jesus raised himself up, he said to her, woman, where are your accusers? Has no one condemned you? She answered, no one, Lord. And Jesus said, I do not condemn you either. Go on your way, and from now on, sin no more. You know, all that woman needed was somebody to see her for who she really was. And that is what God is calling from us right now, y'all is to be able to discern his spirit and to be able to call the king or queen out of someone, to be able to call the gold out of somebody instead of finding the dirt. It takes no talent whatsoever to find the dirt in another human being. All you have to do is come into agreement with the accuser of the brethren and some of y'all have got that down real, real well. And let me tell you something about that. You have a gigantic slice. I, you have a whole humble pie in your future. It's not going to be fun having the rug yanked out from underneath you if you're in agreement with that spirit and refuse to come out of it. And do you know what is blinding you? It's pride because that's what pride does. It blinds us from seeing what we are in agreement with. And so if you are not even willing to pray the simple prayer, Lord, crush my pride. Keep me humble before you. Show me if I am in agreement with pride. Show me if I am in agreement with that religious spirit. If you're not even willing to pray that, It's because deep down, you know you are. And you don't want to discover that because see, that's another demon. Fear. It's because pride blinds, then fear has a chance to come in and convince you, oh no, 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 you can't look there. You can't look there. It's going to be really bad. It's going to destroy you if you do. But actually the opposite is true. When you open that door and let Jesus come in and clean you out and, and you come out of agreement with all of that, it's liberating.
But until you do, you will stifle your own growth with the Lord. Now let's go on to the next verse. Okay, this is Acts. Some of y'all might remember this story. This is the story of the Apostle Paul, who his name used to be Saul too. This is, uh, we were talking about King Saul a few videos back. Now we're talking about Saul who became the Apostle Paul. That, this is New Testament. So, okay. All right. It says, this is Acts 9 verses 1 through, I think we'll just see how far we can go. Okay. Meanwhile, Saul, still drawing his breath hard from threatening and murderous desire against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and requested of him letters to the synagogues at Damascus, authorizing, so, ugh, authorizing him so that if he found any men or women belonging to the way of life as determined by faith in Jesus Christ, he might bring them bound with chains to Jerusalem. Now, as he traveled on, he came near to Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him, and he fell to the ground. Then he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me, harassing, troubling, and molesting me? And Saul said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is dangerous and will turn out badly for you to keep kicking against the good, to offer vain and perilous resistance. Trembling and astonished, he asked, Lord, what do you desire me to do? The Lord said to him, but arise and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men who were accompanying him were unable to speak for terror, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. Then Saul got up from the ground, but though his eyes were opened, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was unable to see for three days. And he neither ate nor drank anything. Now there was in Damascus a disciple named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. And he answered, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Get up and go into the street called Straight and ask at the house of Judas for a man of Tarsus named Saul. For behold, he is praying there. And he's seen, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias enter and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard many people tell about this man, especially how much evil and what great suffering he has brought on your saints at Jerusalem. Now I'm going to stop myself there. Do you see that? See what Ananias did? He went to the Lord. He was genuinely scared of Saul of Tarsus because he'd heard all these, you know, oh, you know, which they were true. Saul was out killing Christians. He was out persecuting Christians. And then the Lord Jesus Christ knocked him off of his high horse. And if Ananias had listened to everybody out there that was flapping their gums in the breeze, well, we might not have gotten most of the New Testament. But let's continue. Okay, it says, Now he is here and has authority from the high priest to put in chains all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for this man is a chosen instrument of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the descendants of Israel. For I will make clear to him how much he will be afflicted and must endure and suffer for my name's sake. So Ananias left and went into the house and he laid his hands on Saul and said, brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you along the way by which you came here has sent me that you may recover your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And instantly something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he recovered his sight. And then he arose and was baptized. And after he took some food and was strengthened, for several days afterward, he remained with the disciples at Damascus. Okay, and if you know the rest of that story, well, he be went on to become the Apostle Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament. I, I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I, I'd say that's nothing to sneeze at. And if Ananias, like I said again, hadn't listened to God, well, it's something to consider, y'all. It really is. We have got to stop putting our mouth on people. 
We've got to. If you see something, rather than respond with a knee-jerk reaction, because you're going to start regretting it if you do. I'm just saying, I have been talking for the last four years about this word that God gave me four years ago about justice, judgment, and jubilee all occurring at the same time. Well, that time is now. And so if we're going out here just gossiping and slandering, and, and it doesn't matter who it is, guys, you know, I'm going to say this again. If we would only pray only half as much as we are out there putting our mouth on people, wow, what a difference we could make. And so I'm going to leave you guys with that thought today. I'm not angry at any one of you all. I know that a lot of the people who watch me are totally in agreement with what I'm saying today. But I'm hoping that there might be somebody out there today that maybe needs to hear this. And I'm not mad at anybody in particular, but I am mad at that spirit. I'm done with that spirit. It's time to take that religious spirit down in the mighty name of Jesus. So anyway, I love you guys. And I hope I've said something today that blessed you. I'm going to get out of here, but... I will see you in the next video.